Moscow has an ordinance on the books protecting the rights of the LGBTQ community. Do you support that law? So, one of the things that, and I've mentioned this at other forums as well, I am very hesitant when it comes to putting together a list of people not to discriminate against. Partially because whenever you make a list, that list is finite. And I think it misses the point. And so ultimately, as we look at our community, I think that it's incredibly important that we realize that every single person in this community is valuable and is worthy of respect. So that's my main focus when it comes to Moscow. I want to make sure that we're actually developing a city from the heart that really does value each individual citizen. That's something that I do in my role in HR. When I'm talking to people about their qualifications, none of that matters to me, the background. The thing that matters to me is will this person do well in their job and are they going to be a good employee? I don't ask other questions because at the end of the day, every single person that I talk to is valuable and is worthy of respect. Thank you. Stella. Yes. Absolutely. I wish that didn't have to be the case, but I absolutely believe that there need to be special protections in place because their human rights are often being discriminated against. And that is just vile to me. I am I'm so happy that we have trainings that teach businesses and teach nonprofits how to be accepting and open and provide a safe place for people who are LGBTQ or maybe other minorities. I'm so thankful that we have places that teach businesses how to do this and that there are stickers that people can put on doors so that that community knows they're in a safe place. But it breaks my heart to know that they need to have a safe place to go and that they need to have a symbol on their door that says, yes, you are accepted here. I accept you for who you are. I wish we didn't have to be that place. I do believe that everyone's rights need to be protected. I wish we didn't have to have these protections. I think about the the anniversaries that are going on right now, the civil rights anniversaries, I think of the suffragist movement when I think of legal women voters, and I think of all the pain and all the agony that people have gone through, and absolutely we have to protect our people. I hope for a day where we don't have to do that. I hope for a day where it's just standard and nobody does care. I don't care at all what people are. I care about people, I care about individuals, but if they need help and if they feel they're being discriminated against, and this group does, then absolutely we must help them. Okay. Ditto, I totally agree that we need this protection. And I think that actually Moscow, we should all applaud Moscow for doing it. Because in 2013, Moscow enacted a resolution which actually provided protections for LGBTQ people, which gave them protections in employment, housing, community property. We are one of 11 cities in this entire state that has such protection. Our state does not protect on a statewide level LGBTQ people. People. In fact, in 2013, the legislature attempted to preclude municipalities in this state from even coming up and protecting these people. One of the difficulties that I have with this ordinance is we don't have enough bite. It gives you a sense that says, yes, we are protecting them. But I have worked a lot of time recently. I spent a lot of time trying to figure out how many times someone's filed a complaint. Where would they do that? I've spent years of my life representing the Missouri Human Rights Commission, the Philadelphia Human Rights Commission. There was always a process. And I'm not sure what that process is here because we're a municipality in a state that doesn't protect LGBTQ people and we live in a country that doesn't actually always protect LGBTQ people. In terms of the civil rights action, we need laws that have teeth. And so you look at that, in 1964, for people who don't know that, they created the Civil Rights Act and they inserted the word sex because they thought that it would defeat the passage of the civil rights movement. We need to have legislation and we need to have the ability to truly protect people because discrimination does happen and we need to take care of that. Thank you. Thank you. So I am, uh, I'm actually excited about this question come up because last time it came up I said something and I got, uh, got someone laughing at me and I had someone that really was quite upset and came up and talked to me afterwards. 
And it gave me some retrospect. And I remember what she said, and I, I told her that I would dig into this even deeper. Um, and then I did so. I have talked to several people um, from different uh, nationalities, um, from same-sex relationships. I've talked to um, people that, that aren't in the minority and, and asked a lot of questions. And I've actually got a lot of answers. And it kind of it, it surprised me a little bit about what I was, uh, what I what I found. Um, I don't have a lot of time to explain all that here, but what I have to say on that is is me personally, I do not allow that in my business. We don't discuss it. We don't. It's not an issue in my business, in my personal life, in my church. It's just not an issue. And so when I look at that, I don't see it as being an issue in the in the areas that I'm at because I don't believe that there should be any discrimination whatsoever. Um, and I, like I said, I don't allow that in my business. It's just that important to me. One of the things I did here is I was talking to somebody who is, um, he owns some apartment um, complex, or some apartments here locally. And I talked to him and I asked him about what his thoughts were on it. And he shared with me a story about uh, a couple that came from Florida that were, that were in a same-sex marriage. And when they got here, it was before Idaho had approved anything like that, and so he, he, he didn't know how to submit the paperwork. And when he went to the city, the city says, yeah, there's a rule against that. He said, so what are the consequences? They couldn't tell him what the consequences are. I believe this issue needs to be at the state level. It needs to be at the federal level. I think that if you do it in the little communities and stuff, you're picking little spots and pockets, and then you don't get the same protection in like Troy or in Potlatch or something. So I think it's important that we fight for it to be at the state level so that everyone's protected. Thank you, Mr. Yes. <laughs> Yeah, I wish somebody would have spoke that passionately about when my signs got painted, you know, for my religious affiliation or my uh, uh, political beliefs. And I didn't have anybody speaking like that. When I was a kid, I'm gonna have to share this because I don't know if you heard it, but when I was a kid, I got prejudiced against the way you beans and rice. When I was in a 14, I was told to leave a donut shop. Why? Because you're a Mexican. Um, so, I understand that. I understand prejudice. Um, so I believe that the rights that were protecting me then are still the same rights protecting me now. But I don't think if someone told me to leave their donut shop because I'm a Mexican that people would stand for it. I don't think you people would stand for it. I hope not. And I think if people heard about it, that business would be shut down. Because why? Because people have been educated that's evil and sinful to do that. And so, um, I don't agree with the lifestyle. It's a religious belief I have, and I'm, I have that freedom under the Constitution. And so, um, but it doesn't mean that I can't love people. The Bible teaches me to love my friends, and it teaches me to love my enemies, and everybody in between. And I don't consider the community LGBTQ my enemies. I don't. And so, um, I want an ordinance that says you can't discriminate against Mexicans from California. <laughs> Why not? Why not? One of the best places I've seen people get along really well here in this town is at my gym. I go to the boneyard, and uh, that's fine. But uh, <laughs> it's a joke. Um, and so I've, I've seen it work really well. Thank you, Mr. Keita. Ms. Gabal. I'm actually going to ask you to repeat the question, please. Oh, boy. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Speaking of the boneyard, okay, here it comes. Uh, Moscow has an ordinance on the books protecting the rights of the LGBTQ community. Do you support that law? Yes, and thank you for rereading that question because I think that it's very important to address that ordinance in particular. I'm really proud to live in a city that made that choice when the state wouldn't. And to add sexual orientation and gender identity to our non-discrimination laws, I think is a very good choice. I completely stand by that. And I have to say that six years later, this was passed in 2013, it is kind of disappointing to me as someone that lives here that this is still something that we're talking about. I think that when we talk about being an inclusive city, this is great in terms of policy, but also in terms of making a statement of our values. And so yes, I fully support the passing of that ordinance. Thank you.